Nate, before we get started, I just wanted to give you a quick disclaimer. Blackmagic sent me this product, the uh, Blackmagic Micro Panel, for about three weeks for review purposes. Enjoy. I am Joy Finale, one of the video producers here at Tested.com, and if you have been following us, you have probably seen uh, this short film that we released of Adam fighting this monster uh, up in the, uh, the grassy hills of New Zealand. If you haven't seen that video, go back a couple and check that out, because uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is the post-production process, specifically this piece of gear that I've been using during the, the color grading portion of this film. This is the Blackmagic Micro Panel. And this is a control panel that is specifically designed to work with the color grading functionality of DaVinci Resolve, which is a program that I use for coloring, uh, and is what I use to color this film. So uh, I've been testing out this piece of gear for a couple of weeks, and I wanted to talk a little bit about it. Now, I'm going to break this video up into two parts. This first part will be what this panel is, how it works with Resolve, and then my thoughts on it. Uh, and then the second part will be us just uh, taking our time and actually grading some of these clips from the film uh, using the panel. So for the panel, let's take a look at this chunk here. Um, this is going to be like your main, uh, your main control for your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. And if you look, there's a wheel that controls all of your levels, and then the uh, and then the rollerball that's inside of that controls the color adjustment for either the highlights, midtones, or shadows. Um, and then above, you have your reset buttons. So each each control here has a set of resets. The uh, the level just resets any changes you made with the the wheel. The RGB button here just resets any changes you made with the rollerball, and then all actually just resets that entire uh, adjustment that you made on that highlight, shadow, or uh, midtones. Now, if you look up here, you have three buttons, log, offset, and viewer. Hitting log will bring you into the log mode, which turns these three wheels into just log adjustments, which gives you like more of a, like a pinpoint control over uh, your midtones and shadows and highlights uh, without affecting the entire image, just that area of the image. Uh, and again, you hit those resets to kind of bring you back to where you started from. Offset kind of changes these three, uh, these three knobs completely. This far right one that used to be highlights is now controlling your offset. So like if you want a complete exposure change, um, just a gamma adjustment or darken, you can do that here with the entire image. Um, same with the color. If you want to do, do like a color temperature change uh, through any direction, you can use this ball for that. Um, these two wheels become controls for both your white balance and your tint. If you look down here, you have uh, temperature and you have tint. These two wheels now control that. So if you want a strict temperature change here, or a strict uh, tint change. Those will be controlled with these two wheels only in offset mode. And then lastly, you have your viewer button. Now this is actually, um, this hotkey on the keyboard is like Command F. And I would use it occasionally just to check out, um, you know, check, check out what the full screen mode looks like. And it's actually been a, a feature that I didn't really know that I needed or wanted. Having you be able to hit the viewer button, go into full screen, and then continue to do your changes with your wheel. That's something you didn't really have before, because. Without the, the panel and just the keyboard, when you go into full screen mode, you can no longer see your, your adjustments. So you have to kind of jump out of full screen mode, make adjustments, then go back in to check that out. Here, I can actually just hop over to viewer mode and do full screen, and then make my entire adjustments through here, and then I can kind of move on to the next clip, um, which has been great. Because I don't even have to look at the interface if I don't want to. And this is kind of how I do my uh, kind of main passes now. I just kind of, I just look at the image, go through and do kind of um, uh, adjustments with my eyes and using the, the dials and then jump out of full screen mode and kind of check on scopes and do some secondary adjustments. But the, the viewer mode has probably been, th this button has been the most used for me uh, with this panel. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have control over the image while being in full screen mode. And you can use it with a second monitor, but you're still, you're still kind of darting your eyes back and forth. Having just that one main monitor be full screen with no controls or interfacing the way is actually really nice. Then everything else here, all these other knobs and dials, they're all kind of self-explanatory. Uh, they all have different, um, different controls to the DaVinci interface, you get your, your contrast, your color boost, your saturations, um, and your, uh, your Y gain, Y lift, and Y gamma if you just want to increase the levels without uh, touching the, uh, the color of the image at all. Um, you can do that here. And then you have like your shadows and highlights knobs if you want to just um, really kind of nudge back some, some highlights that are being blown out or lift up some shadows just a tad. And then with all of these knobs, you can actually just click in and that'll, that'll reset any changes that you've made. And over here on the right, this is going to be your commonly used functions. Uh, you can grab stills here, you can reset, you can redo, you can bypass and disable certain nodes, go to the next clip, go to the next node and do your changes there, do frame nudging, play, reverse, stop. All functions that slowly just chip away at the need for a keyboard. Now this is where things start getting a little dicey. If you are a DaVinci user, then you will know that there's one key function that's kind of missing here, and that's the add new node. Um, you can cycle through nodes here and do changes to those nodes, obviously, but you can't add new nodes. 
Um, with that, you need the keyboard. You need to use the option S button and add a new node and then go back to the panel and do your changes there. Um, not having that function on the panel makes it so you do have to have this keyboard here. Uh, there's also a couple other little functions that I use. The I believe it's called like apply last grade to current clip or, or something of the sort, but it's basically the equals button uh, pulls the grade from the previous clip and adds it to this current clip. That's a button I use quite a bit just to kind of put, my, put myself in a starting point. And if I could have three like custom buttons here where I can um, program any kind of any kind of keystroke functions that I want, uh, then I can probably get rid of the keyboard. But unfortunately, there's no other option. So it kind of forces you to have the keyboard here. So when you look at my setup here, this kind of makes sense. Uh, this is not really how it's supposed to be designed. This is kind of a tabletop panel, much like their, uh, their higher end panel. Um, it's designed to sit on a desk or I guess sit next to your keyboard or behind your keyboard, but that all kind of feels a little tough. Um, I, I need to have my hands close to the keyboard and my hands close to the functions on the panel. Uh, so having it upright like this, right now it's just on a little um, very flimsy tablet holder here. Uh, so if I was to buy this, I'd probably have to make some kind of hack or some build some kind of backboard for it to get a little more uh, support. But this is kind of what I was set up out of necessity. I, I can't really work with the, I mean, and I think most people won't have enough desk space to really work with this panel just lying next to their keyboard or kind of taking up most of their desk. So, it, I mean, it's kind of a downside to this design. Like functionally, it can't replace the keyboard. Yet from a design standpoint, it wants to be in the place where a keyboard should be. Like it looks like it should be right in front of you. Um, but then you have to put your keyboard to the side. So it's kind of an odd choice. Um, I, I'd almost think that they would design this to have some kind of kickstand in the back or something that kind of folds out and allows you to, uh, to treat it much like you would a tablet. Other than that, I do have to say it does feel real sturdy. The knobs and dials all roll real well and the buttons uh, are real responsive. So for the work that I do, um, the larger panel, the, the mini panel, would actually probably be a little bit much for me. This is actually a good, like I like this. I like this setup, even though it's not designed for it. I like having uh, my keyboard accessible and my panel just like right next to each other. So I can quickly do grades, move on to the next nodes, add, um, apply nodes from previous things. Every, everything is, is here. Um, and again, it's not designed for it, but this is kind of how I want to, to work. And the size of this thing is actually pretty attractive. I mean, if you look, it's shorter than my keyboard and it travels pretty well. Like I said, it's so durable and sturdy, I wouldn't mind throwing it into a bag or a Pelican case to travel with. And the fact that it connects with one USB-C cable for both power and control um, makes it a real attractive field kit. If I was to take this out on shoots and do like DIT work or color grade, um, some shots that were just pulling off, uh, this would actually be something that I would take, whereas the, the larger the mini panel would be something that would stay in the studio. And people do have this set up differently. This is just my preference. Um, some people do have them side by side, laying kind of uh, stacked from front to back. Your preferences may vary in how you like this. Uh, this is kind of how I, this is the only way I can really work with it. I can't work with it any other way. Um, this is what I found to be the most comfortable and the most uh, intuitive way for me to work. Again, your preferences may vary. That has been part one of this Blackmagic Micro panel. Uh, now, what do you say we jump into a couple clips and just kind of put this to use and grade a few scenes from this short film? All right, so here are a few of the clips of the short film that we shot. So let's just start with the beginning image here. Um, let's just say the first thing we want to do is we want to add some contrast. So uh, we want to make it a little more dramatic. So I'll bring the highs up, bring the lows down. You can see I'm able to work kind of with both hands, um, which is, again, was nothing I could do with the mouse. I, couldn't, I have to do each individual adjustment and see how that affects it. So I'm going to bring the mids up just a bit and take the darks down. So let's say I like that contrast. Um, now let's go with the color. Uh, looks like his, maybe his skin tone will take, take a little bit more towards the flesh line. Maybe add a little bit of like kind of green and orange to it. And then you can see that there's like kind of like overall green cast of an image now. So let's just go into offset and try to pull out that green without adding too much magenta. All right, so let's say I like that. Um, let's work on the monster a bit. So I'm gonna go into the log mode here. And now I'm just gonna bring everything that's in the low end. If you see it in scopes, you can watch my low end just slowly start to drop. Um, this will give the monster kind of less emphasis on some of the lower end detail and like bring that, um, make it a little more dramatic and a little more out of this out of this world. So there, let's get out a log, go back to our primaries. I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase just the gain, just the, or just the gamma rather, and just bring up the, um, the mid of the image up without any of the other channels. Great, let's kind of drop the highlights down. Again, bring those shadows, make sure those don't. 
Um, and it's still a little colorful for me. So instead of doing saturation, and I'm gonna do color boost, which is gonna be more of like a vibrancy. It's just gonna drop, at, drop down the color um, punch just a little bit without pulling colors and pulling the channels out. So let's lay right there. I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast. And yeah, I, I kind of like that. Like it's a, it's kind of a different image than what the final ended up being, but um, it kind of has its own look and feel, uh, kind of a uh, uh, hot summer or sunset uh, sort of battle, something maybe more, more dramatic and less frightening or threatening. So let's see what that looks like before and after. So let's just disable all of the, uh, actually, so bypass will disable all of the nodes. We're only working with one node right now. We should probably have done one node for levels and one node for color, but oh well, for this example, we'll just use one node. So let's just disable that. And this is what we started with. And this is what we ended up with. Um, you still see we're getting some blown out highlights in his armor, but that's gonna be unavoidable because it's reflective armor. So we're gonna have to kind of deal with those, but there you go. Before, this is what we shot in camera. Um, this is what we have graded to, and then you can you can always come back to it. I'll, I'll probably do some secondary passes. So I come back in with the mouse and keyboard and I actually um, will kind of isolate certain color graphs, like isolate skin tones or isolate certain elements and then do a secondary correction on a new node. And that's kind of more advanced, but uh, at that point you are kind of not needing the the uh, panel, so to speak, uh, as much and you're kind of um, you know dialing in some, some curves and stuff with your mouse and keyboard. So let's do another clip here of a close-up of the monster. Here's the monster kind of sniffing before he turns around and sees Adam. So let's work with this a bit and add, um, start with again, your levels, add some contrast without, let's make this one a little more desaturated, more like a, or high contrast, but rather like uh, with, the, with the lows kind of milked up a bit so that it's not so crunched, kind of a, a style that's more popular, probably not with these kind of films, but it is a look that has been it is a look that has been popular over the last few years. So there we go, let's add some contrast to them. Keep those, um, just the just the uh, the Y gain and the Y lift while keeping the color channels down to keep it desaturated. Let's go into log mode and actually bring up the lows. So bring up that black point, something a little bit higher so it's gonna have a little bit flatter of a look, a little more dreamlike. Um, and then now we can add contrast within that image. I'm gonna bring down the log of the highlights into like a legal limit so this guy is not way too overblown out and then jump back into regular and bring the primaries down just actually let's try to recover some of the highlights with this knob we're just going to have to lose all that stuff in the back so totally different look totally different style uh but you can see what we can you know at this point now if we want to add some color back in we can use the color boost or even the saturation uh, let's just try one more let's try one more without them getting up um, and looking around. Let's go ahead and work on the contrast. Give it a little bit of a pop in its facial features here. It's still a little dark in the outside, so let's bring the lows up. Making the mids down to bring in some vibrancy. Uh, add a little bit of color pop. And now, well, let's show you what this mid detail looks like. Let's, let's actually soften this. Let's make it more like the Excalibur shot that uh, we're mimicking here. Kind of very softer, uh, some like halation in the whites. Uh, much more like traditional Hollywood style look. Um, that's a little oversaturated, bring the color boost down. And then I'm gonna work on his skin tone just a bit. So again, normally I would start a new node and actually try to isolate some of the skin tones before uh, just try to move the whole image. But let's do something like that. And let's bring a little bit of blue into the shadows, make it a little more cinematic and warmer in the highlights. Color boost down. Let's. It's actually like pop some of those highlights. Bring some of the shadows. And I go into the log and just lift up some of these things that are clipping out that I don't want to. I still want to have some detail in the trees. So there you go. Um, there's like kind of a more uh, classical, a classical look. Um, none of these three grades that I just did were really part of the part of the final film. Uh, I spent a little more time going through those and then doing, like I said, secondary corrections on things. But here you can see just um, kind of how fast you can audition certain grades. So here's, here's the original clip that we had. Here's what we ended up with. Um, so you see it's a big difference in a short amount of time. Uh, and you can, I mean, like you can do this with a mouse and keyboard, but it will probably take about double the time. And having just, again, like I can, I can dual wield uh, wheels. Again, there's the before, there's the after. It took me about 20 seconds or so to 
kind of create this look. And if I'm on set, if I'm on field uh, with this setup, I can kind of audition different looks for what we're going for and kind of light and set dress according to uh, what look everybody is, is kind of agreeing on. And that concludes our video on the Blackmagic Micro Panel. If you have any questions on that or any just uh, video production questions in general, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. That link is in the description here. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye.